Jesus. There is no one like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, good evening, saints. Thank you for connecting with us again in this way uh, for revival hour in the name of Jesus, that the Lord be glorified through this platform, even as we connect in this way to bring glory to God's name and pray with you and for you and bring a word of exhortation uh, to God's glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the song said, There is no one like God be it in heaven, be it on earth, be it under the earth. There is no one like God. God, Him alone, is unique in His class. There is no comparison to God. There is no, uh, uh, no one can compare with Him. God is unique in His class. He is self-existing, self-sufficient, all-knowing. Only Him alone is able to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals, as Revelation chapter 5 uh, demonstrates to us in the name of Jesus. Him alone, Jesus, the Lamp of God, possess the infinite fitness to open the scroll and to loose its seven seal to reveal the mysteries of God, of what will take place toward the end, even in the end of times, in the name of Jesus. So thank you once again for connecting with us. Indeed, there is no one like him. Glory to Jesus. I want us to begin by opening in a word of prayer to acknowledge indeed that the Lord him alone is worthy, him alone is God, and let him have his way through this platform in the name of Jesus. Father, we surrender to you, we lift up prayer before you, praise before you, and worship, and say you alone are worthy. You are God, unique in your class, you are self-existing, self-sufficient, all-knowing, and all-powerful God, unique in your class. You dwell between the cherubim of God, you dwell in an unapproachable life. You alone are holy, you alone are mighty, you alone are sovereign. Receive worship, receive adoration at this hour in the name of Jesus, the resurrected, the Lord. May this prayer today, Lord, bring glory to your name. Let there be a touch over somebody's life. Let somebody be impacted. Let somebody be revived. Let the Lord be glorified, even through this platform, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Uh, the scripture, we're continuing here today and praying God's blessing over the work of our hand in the name of Jesus. The blessing of the Lord over the work of our hand. And work is not a curse. Work is the part of the design of God. We see that in Genesis chapter number 2 verse 15 when God has planted he, he took man and planted him in the garden of Eden so he may work it and keep it uh, Genesis chapter number 2 verse 15 and work is not necessarily or limited to a job work is what we do we find ourselves to do in the name of Jesus and it can be a business it can be education it can be consulting it can be writing it can be publishing this publishing that it can be trading it can be ministering it can be uh, uh, doing God's work by God's work meaning spreading the gospel be in the forefront to spread the gospel of the Lord is God's work. It can be uh, 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 education, teaching people. It's God's work. Writing books is God's work. Writing magazine, it's, it's, it can, it's, uh, it's the work of your hand. Doing all this type of work are God's inspired work for our hand in the name of Jesus. And number three, the work of our hand indeed have to reflect the character of God. So we, we are, when we are, somebody is, a, is hired to go and kill, 
they may do work according to world perspective, but in the sight of God is not work. It did not reflect the character of God because work has to reflect the character of God. So it's not any type of work, but work in the context of the Bible to reflect the character of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, because God's people love him and walk according to his ways. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12, one of the powerful promises. Just going to read before we go into today's scripture. Deuteronomy 28, verse 12 says, The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. So all the work of your hand, be it your investing work of your hand, writing work of your hand, trading work of your hand, import and export work of your hand, employment work of your hand, running a business work of your hand. So the scripture here is promised being a farmer, cultivating the work of your hand, owning property, renting property, buying property and selling property work of your hand. And the scripture here is says one of the promise of God concerning the work of your hand is that he's going to bless all the work of your hand. All the work of your hand is going to bless. He's going to empower the work of your hand to excel. Empower the work of your hand to succeed. Empower the work of your hand to prosper, to be fruitful, to increase in the name of Jesus. And that's what we are praying. And you will see in scripture, we're going to read quickly, shortly, Genesis chapter 26, verse 19, going to 22. But before then, you will see wherever the children of God were, or wherever a servant of God or a child of God was located as they were being guided and led by the Lord, you will see God empowerment over them so that the work that they do excel and succeed in the name of Jesus. Now, Genesis number uh, 26 verse 19 and to verse number 22, one of the example we can look at as we, uh, we go into prayer, uh, it says, in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 26, verse 19 to verse number 22, it says, Also Isaac's servant dug in the valley and found a well of running water. It was their work to do in this instance to get a well running. Verse 20 says, But the headsman of Gerar, quarreled with Isaac headsman, saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Essek, because they quarreled with him. Then he moved again to another place, verse 21. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna. Verse 22, where we are getting into, it says, And he moved from there, and dug another well, and they quarrel not, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name, the name of that well, Rehoboth, because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. I'm going to read again uh, verse number 22. It says, and he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. There was always a time where the warfare ceases. There was always a time where there is God intervention and whatever was a source of frustration, it's coming to an end in the name of Jesus. So he says in verse 22, and he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. In other words, now God has created a conducive environment for us to be productive, for us to be fruitful in this space in the name of Jesus. God has created as a, a space for us 
to be fruitful without any hindrances, without quarreling, without the, the Philistine now coming here again and hindering us. God has created an environment conducive for us to be fruitful in this place in the name of Jesus. Because one thing for sure you need to know, there is God's promise over God's children that indeed he will bless the work of their hand. He will empower for them to excel, for them to prosper, for them to succeed in the work of their hand. So even when there are attacks, even in this case, they were physical attacks, but for us, we read in the even in the New Testament context, the attack can be spiritual. But one thing for sure, there will be a time where those attacks will cease and our work will advance and the environment will be conducive for us to do work in the name of Jesus. For now, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. We shall be fruitful in, you shall be fruitful in the place of your operation. Can be business, can be work, can be employment, can be trading, can be selling, and can be buying a wall sell and, and selling one by one, can be import and export, can be writing, can be publishing, can be media related work. Uh, marketing related work can be teaching related work can be whatever you find yourself to do as God guide you may God make the environment conducive and bless and making you fruitful in the land in the place of your operation is the land and the land here for them where they are where they have their their flock where they can cultivate where they have their flock God has made the environment to be conducive and then them be being fruitful in that place, meaning you also, God, will make your environment to be fruitful, will cause the place of where you are operating, where God is taking you to be conducive, creating a space by God that to be fruitful, a channel or a platform upon which you are operating. Let the Lord make that platform fruitful, productive in the name of Jesus by the Lord blessing the work of of your hand in the name of Jesus. Blessing the work of your hand. Blessing the work of your hand. Meaning to empower the work of your hand. As Deuteronomy 28, 12 says, that he will bless. He was, who's blessing? The Lord. He will empower. It's a divine enablement to cause the work of your hand to excel. It's a divine uh, uh, empowerment to cause the work to prosper. God's blessing over the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. Here, one of the many examples in the Bible, God now has created a conducive environment for Isaac and the people working for Isaac to be fruitful in the land, in the name of Jesus. So as we begin, we go through, we're going to go through other scriptures shortly, but I just sense already there we need to make a prayer for God to make a room for you. For God to create a conducive environment for you, for the work of your hand to be excelling, to be productive, to be increasing, to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. So that Genesis chapter number 26 and verse 19, I want us to pray it straight away and make a declaration that God will create a conducive environment for your work, a conducive environment for your business, a conducive environment in the place in which you are operating so that you can be productive, so that you can be increasing, so that you can bear fruit, so that you may see result in the name of Jesus. And I want us to begin to pray and pray and make this declaration and say, my father, my God, in the name of Jesus, Create for me a conducive environment for the work of my hand to excel in the name of Jesus. A powerful prayer. Mention it again with all fervency, uh, with, uh, with faith indeed that it shall be so in the name of Jesus. Pray again and say, my Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, create for me a conducive environment for the work of my hand to excel, to prosper, to advance 
in the name of Jesus. One more time, my Father and my God, in the name of Jesus, create for me a conducive environment for the work of my hand to excel, to prosper, to move forward. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray for your career, for your business, for whatever you find to do as God leads you in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. On behalf of your people, on behalf of our lives here, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up prayers before you, oh God, that a conducive environment in the place of our operation, in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. We pray, almighty God, a conducive environment. May you make a room for somebody, oh God, work in the mighty name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord, that the Lord may make a room for Lesekos business in the name name of Jesus, your work of operation, the work of your hand, that the Lord may create a conducive environment for you, let's echo, in the mighty name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. Father, we pray for a conducive environment upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus, that Lord, as you have made a room for Isaac and his people, and for them to be fruitful in the land, we stand on that scripture, Genesis 26 and verse 19. Father God, Genesis 26 and verse number 22, in the mighty name of Jesus, may the Lord create a room conducive, environment conducive, and make a room for his people in the work of their hand, Lord. This week we are calling upon your name, Father, for the work of our hand, for the work of your people's hand. May there be a conducive environment for the work of their hand in the mighty name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. We pray Pray, oh God, may you meet them at a very point of need. May there be a room created for them, for the work of their hand. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. I thank you, Lord, and I give you the praise. I give you the glory in the name of Jesus. That the Lord may make a room for your work. That the Lord may create a conducive environment for you to be productive. That the Lord, by his power may create an environment conducive for you to prosper in the work of your hand. Doing work, he is part of God's plan for his people in the name of Jesus. That's why in the very beginning in Genesis chapter number 2 verse 15, God planted the man in the garden of Eden so that he may work it and keep it. So it's a desire of God that in the place of your operation for you to work and be productive, for you to work and excel, for you to work and increase in the name of Jesus, for you to work and find favor in the place so that your work may move forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And before this scripture here, they were being uh, hindered by the, the headsmen of Gerard, the Philistine, were uh, hindering them. They dug a well here, and the Philistine come and interfere with them. They go to another place, they dug a well, and the Philistine come and interfere with them. And they go to another place until they say, now this is real birth, because here they are no longer quarreling, for the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the name of of Jesus. So I want us, us to pray. Confess this prayer with all fervency. Confess this prayer with all boldness that every hindrances against the work of your hand be removed by the power of God in the name of Jesus. That the God of Israel may intervene against any hindrances against the work of your hand. Let the hindrances be removed. Let the hindrances be removed in the name of Jesus. So I want us to pray and and begin to make this declaration. Oh Lord, by divine authority, every hindrances of the enemy against the work of my hand, let those hindrances be removed by your power in the name of Jesus. Two more times, make this confession as your own. Oh Lord, by divine authority, Every hindrances of the enemy against the work of my hand, let those hindrances be removed by your power in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, by divine authority, 
Every hindrances of darkness against the work of my hand, let the hindrances be removed by your power in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Father, we raise an intercessory prayer before you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. We stand in the gap, in the authority of the name of Jesus. And declare every hindrances in the way of your people's work. Every hindrances against your people's work. Lord, those hindrances now be removed by your power. In the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Stretch out your mighty hand, O God against hindrances family hindrances bloodline hindrances hindrances in the marketplace hindrances in our place of operation let them be removed by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus the resurrected Lord that the Lord intervene in the name of Jesus that the Lord intervene in the name of Jesus that whatever is stopping you from being fruitful in the work that the Lord has inspired you we command that thing to pray. We command that thing to break. We command that thing to break by the power in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Whatever is not of God as a hindrance against your work, let it be out of the way. Let it be removed in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Any hindrances coming from your bloodline, where no one from your bloodline has succeeded. Today, by divine authority, we raise a prayer before the God of Israel and command that hindrances to break and command that hindrance to be defeated by the power in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. Let the Lord arise and his enemies against your life be scattered in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Let the Lord arise that hindrances against your life be removed move in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord arise that hindrances against your business be removed out of the way by the power in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. That the Lord arise, let his enemy be scattered. That the Lord arise, let the hindrances against your work be removed completely in the name of Jesus. That the Lord may create a conducive environment for your work. In this season, that the Lord may co create a conducive environment for your work to excel, for your work to move forward in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless the work of your hand. In the name of Jesus, he says, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens. To give the rain to your land in its season. And to bless all the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. To bless is to empower to excel. And who is doing that? God. So to bless is a divine empowerment from God for you to excel. For you to advance. For you to move forward in the name of Jesus. And that's what we are praying. That the Lord will bless the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. And prayer number one, that you will create a conducive environment for you to be fruitful, for you to excel in the name of Jesus. And whatever hindrances, like the way Isaac and his servant were being hindered, were being frustrated by the, the, the people of Philistine in Genesis 26. We are praying that any hindrances of darkness, any hindrances of the enemy uh, against the work of your hand, against what you do as God has inspired you, let those hindrances be defeated in the name of Jesus. Let those hindrances out of the way by the power in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're continuing to pray in Jesus' name. And before then, on the next scripture, we're going to read uh, Genesis number 39. Genesis 39, verse 1 to 5. Genesis 39, verse 1 to 5. Another example, powerful example. We read this, we stir up our faith, and we pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will remember the work of your hand and empower it to excel, empower it to succeed in the name of Jesus. Genesis 39, verse 1 to 5. 
Hallelujah. Another example of God blessing the work of Joseph, even in Potiphar's house, God is backing him up in the name of Jesus. Even where you are, we trust in God to back you up in Jesus' name. The same God will back up Joseph in Potiphar's house. How much more will he back you up while you are doing your own work, while you are doing your own business, while, while you are in a place where you are not a slave? How much more in the name of Jesus? This is what the scripture says, Genesis uh, 39 verse 1 and 2 verse number 5. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt and, uh, to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelite who had taken him down there. So he's been bought as a slave. He was taken there as a slave. And now he's been bought again as a slave to work in Potiphar's house. Verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph. One thing you need to know as a child of God, even in the time where things look difficult and rough, have the assurance within you that you are not alone. God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. I just feel I need to say that and it has been it's just impressing in my spirit right now that the Lord was with Joseph. His ministry he is being taken to Egypt bound as a slave to Egypt but God was with him. Potiphar bought him from the Ishmaelite and brought him to his house but God was with Joseph. So when you are going through rough places in the season where things seem to be tough for you, have the assurance within you that you are not alone. God is with you. God is with you. Even in the book of Acts, when it's being explained again in this scenario, they say God was with Joseph. God is with you. You are not alone. No matter where life takes you, as a child of God, walking according to God's ways, embracing the Lord, God is with you. You are not alone. God is with you. And it's a matter of time for things to turn around in the name of Jesus. Hence, we are approaching God by prayer that he may touch the work of our hand in the name of Jesus. The same God who was with Joseph is the same God with you, Leseko. God is with you in the name of Jesus. And verse 2 says, the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. Though a slave, successful. A prisoner, successful. In a, in, a, in a land, in a foreign land, he was successful in the name of Jesus. God is with you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not moving there. The Lord is with you. Sometimes things may be tough. Lord, I do not have work. Hence, we are praying here for work. But in that season where you do not have work, God is with you. You are not alone. God is with you. And the, the moment you know you have the assurance within you that I am not alone, God is with me, then it's a matter of time for things to turn around. God is with you. Ever, God is with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. I'm reading verse 2. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Again, what a confirmation. Even a stranger a person who's not part of the covenant, he's an Egyptian, he's not part of the covenant of God as it is in the Old Testament at this stage. But he could realize that this guy is not alone. There is something he, that he's doing that is causing him to excel. What is that? God was with Joseph. Even Potiphar, his master, realized this boy is not alone. His, verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand, in the name of Jesus. The Lord made whatever was in Joseph's hand. 
to prosper. That's what we are praying. The work of your hand to prosper. It means God is fulfilling his side of the covenant that whatever your hand find to do is inspired by God. You are not alone. God is with you and God will make that thing to prosper. God will make that career to excel. God will make that business to break forth and expand. You are not alone. God is with you. Hallelujah. And it's verse 3 again. Oh, wonderful passage. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and, the, and that the Lord made all, not some, all. He's walking in the covenant. All is obedient to God. He's a child. He's obeying God. He's working according to the ways of God. Joseph was not a, he was not a wicked man. He was following the ways of God. Things are tough, but he still stay in the ways of God. Still keeping himself pure. Things were tough, but he kept himself pure. You will see later, even when Potiphar's wife wanted to go for Joseph, Joseph refused and ran away. He kept himself pure. Slave, pure. In a foreign land, pure. He, 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 uh, uh, young, yet pure. And the Lord was with him. And because of that, God responded by making sure that whatever he did prosper. Not even because it was not even his own. It was for somebody else, but the Lord made it to prosper. Because God is fulfilling his side of ensuring that the work of your hand are blessed in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord, verse 3, again, we are not moving from verse 3. And, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper. Then he made him, then him the master, made Joseph overseer of his house, and all that he had, he put under his authority because he realized how this guy, whatever he's doing, is prospering. And he's not doing it for him. He's doing it for the Egyptian. And the Egyptian realized whatever Joseph's hand touches, just prosper, turn into gold. He's excelling. So, hey, what can I do? What is the natural reaction of any man? He's taking everything and put under Joseph's care. Be the one in charge. That verse 4. Now verse 5. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had. That the Lord did what? Bless the Egyptian's house. For Joseph's sake. God. <laughs> and let the read again. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had. Well, all that the Egyptian had in, in, the, in the house and in the field. All the possession of Potiphar prosper, excel, move forward. Why? Because Joseph's hand was at work in that place. And Joseph was not alone. God was fulfilling the side of his promise that he will bless the work of your hand. In this case, he is blessing Joseph's work, though the beneficiary is Potiphar. And it's to show you and I, when you are inspired by God, look at this example. He's a slave in a, in a foreign land, in, a, in, a, in somebody else's house, and doing work in that house. And God is blessing that house and excelling. Whatever is in the house and whatever is in the field. How much more if you in the business, Riranzo, you are doing business of your own. As God guide and lead you. How much more will God prosper that business? How much more will God back up that business to excel in the name of Jesus? As we are praying and reminding God, this is your promise. You say you will bless all the work of my hand. That is you leading me here. I pray, let the work of my hand be empowered from every aspect. What was on the house was blessed. What was in the field was blessed. So Potiphar household and business empire was being blessed by God from all aspects because God's child hand was 
the one doing the work in the name of Jesus. I hope you understand that. And I want us just to pray at this hour. We pray that the Lord will empower the work of your hand to prosper. Will empower the work of your hand to prosper in every aspect. In every aspect, in the name of Jesus, every area of your work, let it be empowered by the Lord to prosper. With this understanding of uh, Genesis 39, 1 to 5, this example we are reading, let that it touch your heart and pray that the Lord empower you to prosper in every area of your work, in the name of Jesus. Begin to make this declaration. In the name of Jesus, that by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, as we make this declaration, let it be heard in heaven. Let it be heard before the throne room of God. Let the Lord remember his word in Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. Let the Lord respond. Let the Lord remember his word in Genesis 39, the example he has given us about Joseph. And let the Lord respond. Let the Lord remember his word according to the example he has given us in Genesis 26 and verse 22, when he made room for Isaac and his servant to be fruitful in the land. Let the Lord remember and attend to you in the name of Jesus and bless all the work of your hand, every area of your work. Not one area is prospering of the work. This one you are struggling. You are, you are, you are prospering in terms of relationship with your supplier and dealing but on the customer side, you are being hindered. Or you are prospering on the customer side, but the, your workers have hindrances. So we are praying that the Lord may empower you from every aspect. Customer aspect, supplier aspect, your workers support. The people who buy, they have to pay. They cannot just buy and don't pay. So every aspect, let them, let them be blessed by the Lord. When they buy, when they use, deliver product, you are assured that indeed they will pay. When they ask, they place orders, you are assured that they will not cancel that order. Let your work be blessed from every area in the name of Jesus. And begin to make this declaration. And say, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, empower me to prosper in every area of my work in the name of Jesus. Make this declaration after me. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, empower me to prosper in every area of my work, of my business in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, the God who was with Joseph, empower me to prosper in every area of my work in the name of Jesus. One more time. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, the God who was with Joseph, empower me to prosper in every area of my work in the name of Jesus. Begin to make that prayer. Father, we raise a prayer before you. You were with Joseph and you caused him to prosper. You caused all that he did to prosper in the name of Jesus. So I pray today may you cause what your people do in the work of their hand as you inspire, as you lead them, as you guide them. Let that prosper in the name of Jesus. Let the work of their hand excel in the name of Jesus. Those who are in import and export let them find a favor in those nations where they are importing things. Let them find a favor in those nations where they are importing things. Let the supplier collaborate. Let the supplier work with them in the name of Jesus. Where they are exporting law, may the customer buy. May there be payment. May the fund be released. Let every area of their work prosper in the name of Jesus. Those in selling, you buy in Warsaw and sell one piece, two piece and return. Let me pray that the Lord will cause you and send you buying customer, paying customer, that the field will open and you will prosper. The way God caused the Egyptian house to prosper, to excel for Joseph's sake in the house and in the field. If I may, the Lord cause you to excel in the house, in the field, in the inside, in your company. May things may work well in the name of Jesus, in the field where you deal with supplier, where you deal with customer, where you go for business expansion, business meeting. May the Lord back you up. May the Lord be with you as he was with Joseph in the name of Jesus. And the Lord be with you as he was with Joseph in the name of Jesus. Because you are not alone as a child of God. You are not alone. The Lord 
is with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord is with you. Something here we want to say quickly before we proceed further in the name of Jesus as we are praying here. When we read this scripture, something that always reminds me is that God is blessing the Egyptian's house, not because of the Egyptian, but because of the person who is in the Egyptian's house called Joseph. Time and again, you will see your company where you are working, it's excelling. You need to understand this principle because God has said you will bless the work of your hand. So when you are finding there, you are working in that company and the company is excelling and the company is moving forward. Why? Because of the person who is in that company. Because of the Christian who is in that company. Because that Christian, that child of God, is not alone. He or she he is with the Lord. She is with the Lord. And the Lord is backing him or her in the work of their hand to excel. As a result, your company excelling. You will see as it says, verse, let's read again verse 5. Uh, so it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house. For Joseph's sake. So in other way, the Lord is blessing pick and pay. Because you are working at pick and pay. The Lord is blessing Vodacom. Why? Because they are children of covenant who are working for Vodacom. But when Vodacom reward you, he gives you a salary. But then they make huge profit. And with that in mind, because you say you bless the work of your hand. Whether you are working for Father God, the work of your hand are being blessed. Whether you are doing business for yourself, the work of your hand are being blessed. But when you are working for yourself, or you are doing business for yourself, look how much more benefit comes to you. And I am saying this so that you, uh, not to say you must resign, but for you to begin to think that when I am working here at Vodacom at the pick and pay, what else can I do outside pick and pay hours in my own time so that I may have the benefit, the full benefit of the blessing of God over the work of my hand? I hope somebody understands. Because the promise is toward the work of your hand. If your work, the work of your hand is working for Vodacom, God is fulfilling his side by blessing the work of your hand. The Vodacom benefit in bigger portion, you will benefit in the portion in which you are in terms of salary. But if you are doing, and when you are working, and you are doing investment, and you are, you are selling on weekend this and that, remember those as well are work of your hand. And God is backing you up in those. And in those that you are doing for yourself as business, everything as profit, as increase comes to you. We are seeing here, who is benefiting? Potiphar's house is benefiting. The Egyptian is benefiting. Why? Because God is fulfilling the side of his promise. I will bless the work of your hand. Joseph, you are working for Potiphar a blessing Potiphar's house, not for Potiphar, but because of Joseph who's in there. And God has to back up the work of Joseph's hand because he promised Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 12 to bless all the work of your hand. And all of Joseph's work of his hand during this period was happening in Potiphar's house, in the house and in the field. That was when Potiphar realized he put everything under Joseph's charge. And as a result, he's the one benefiting. He's the one receiving the increase. He's the one prospering. And Joseph just get the benefit of being a slave in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God will bless all the work of your hand. So when you are an employee, think of other means of generating wealth and pray to God as we pray yesterday for godly ideas. I know you are working here in the, in the day, but in the night, spend three hours uh, applying what God is giving you and begin to implement because there is 
God promised beyond that that he will bless all the work of your hand. Not some, all. When you are working for Vodacom, he's blessing the work of your hand. When you are trading, he's, working, he's blessing the work of your hand. When you are buying in bulk and, and retail, he's blessing the work of your hand. So whether you are doing it for yourself or for somebody else, is blessing the work of your head because that's what he has promised. Now the beneficiary of the whole increase is the owner of that. If it's Vodacom, Vodacom benefit. If it's pick and pay, pick and pay benefit the whole. But if, uh, and you get a portion of it in terms of salary. But if it's you, then God is empowering you to prosper and bless the work of your hand. And all the returns, the increase, come to you as a child of God. Remember, God is doing his side. You're doing your side as well in the name of Jesus. I just felt I'm going share that wisdom. Every time I look at this scripture and I see because God is saying you will bless all the work of your hand. And let not all the benefit all the blessing, the empowerment of all the work of your hand, somebody has benefiting them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Having said that, I, I, I just, we, we did a prayer here yesterday. Let us repeat. Because based on this, you need to be inspired. Let God illuminate you to see what else to do. I am an employee at pick and pay. I am an employee at DSTV. I am an employee at, uh, in government. But what else can I do in my free time? Not in their time and taking their time. In your free time so that you may be able to create other channels of work in which God promise will come and be fulfilled by God backing you up in the name of Jesus. So I want you to pray and pray Lord, for godly ideas in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you may grant your people godly ideas, innovation, godly ideas for wealth creation, godly ideas for source of income to be open for them in the name of Jesus, that all the increase may come to their lives, Lord, that they may be indeed even pillars, financial pillars in the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. So I pray for every woman here that the Lord may grant you godly ideas, that the Lord may grant you innovation, that the, God, the Lord may illuminate you as the Lord is with you, may he illuminate you, may he enlighten you to see other avenues for wealth creation in the name of Jesus. May the God of Israel back you up in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Because God is with you. The Lord is with you. And let him back you up in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord was with Joseph and inspired him. In the name of Jesus. That God may grant you life-changing ideas, innovation. It may start small, but be faithful in that small thing. You may, you may be trusting God to have a, a chain of stores, but God may begin to entrust you progressively by starting granting you an opportunity to buy in bulk and sell individually. Go and deliver individually. God is looking and trusting you and, and trusting you and see your faithfulness. The more faithful you are, the more opportunity open up. And in the end, is taking you into that place of chain of stores in the name of Jesus. We are praying that the Lord may grant you such ideas and make room for you, conducive environment for you to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. The way he did it for Isaac and his servant in Genesis 26 and verse number 22. And the Lord bless the work of your hand. Everything you do, like the way he did here uh, for Joseph, though Joseph working for Potiphar, according to Genesis 39, verse 1 and 5. Let, may you experience that for your own. May you experience that for your own life in the name of Jesus, because God is true to his word. He say he will bless all the work of your hand. So whatever your hand find to do, may the Lord bless it in the name of Jesus. May the Lord empower it to excel in the name of Jesus. The Lord cause it to prosper in the name of Jesus. Remember to do work 
is part of God's idea. Hence, in Genesis chapter number 2, verse 15, God himself took Adam and planted him in the Garden of Eden to work it. So, to do work, to tender it, to keep it, because work is part of God's idea. Work is not a result of the curse because of the fall of man. Hence, the fall of man happened in Genesis number uh, chapter 3. But Adam was already working in Genesis chapter number 2, verse 15. Hallelujah. So work, and work is not a job. Work is, a, a, we are talking about work here in, in a biblical context, meaning a something that inspired by God for you to do. It can be work, it can be employment, as a job, it can be running your business, it can be writing books, it can be presenting material, educating people and inspiring them, it can be uh, owning a trading company, import and export, it can be writing magazine, it can be writing books, it can be ministering to people, it can be showing cares to orphans, whatever work God inspires you to do, God will do his part by blessing that work in the name of Jesus. And number three, the work that we do have to reflect the character of God. And it's not any type of work. It's not going to assassinate people. They can, the world can call it is a business. This one, they hire him to go and kill, but does not reflect the character of God. But so that work will not be blessed by God. This one is into drugs. That work will not, does not reflect the character of God. So it's not the work I'm talking about. Doing prostitution, that work is not reflecting the character of God. So God will not bless that way. God will bless the work that reflects his character. Hence, he guides his people. He guides his children in a particular way. And when they do that work, be it in employment, be it in business, be it in education, be it in entertainment, be it in politics, God is backing fulfilling the side of his covenant by ensuring that the work of your hand is blessed in the name of Jesus. God shall bless all the work of your hand according to Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 12. Remain blessed and lifted before the last prayer. On Sunday we are meeting here for church service and we would like to encourage you to join us for church and let us have a great time in the presence of God church at half past nine uh, uh, as per the address on our Facebook page. We, are, we look forward to fellowship with you this Sunday and let the Lord have his way. For one-on-one -on -one prayers, we are here available on Sunday to pray and stand with you in agreement for whatever you are trusting God for. Uh, we stand with you in agreement and pray with you and for you and let there be an opening. Even for the prayer we have done here and, and uh, you are welcome to say this is what I am working on. I need you to stand with me in prayer. So be with us here on Sunday and we shall have that time and commit and stand with you in prayer and let the Lord have his way in Jesus name. Father, we commit your, the lives of your people before you. We ask you that you may bless every single one of them, that your face may shine upon them, that the God of Israel may be gracious to them. May you cause the work of their hand to prosper and excel in Jesus' name. Every man here, I pray, may you create a conducive environment for the work that they do in Jesus' name. Every woman here, Lord, may you make a room for them to be fruitful in Jesus' name. Anybody trusting you for employment, may they give gate of employment open for them in Jesus' name. Anyone, Lord, in business and putting proposal, I pray let them be find favor with decision maker in Jesus' name. May the glory of the Lord be upon his people. The God who was with Joseph, be with your people. The God who was with Abraham, be with your people. The God who was with Isaac, be with your people. The God who was with Jacob, be with your people in the name of Jesus and bless the work of their hand. Empower the work of their hand, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you on Sunday. Remain blessed and lifted. Hallelujah. And we shall see you on Sunday. Shalom, shalom, shalom.